you know, the circle of life and all that crap. So don't feed me your line of bull. Okay, so that they think they're the intelligent, pragmatic, educated one on this matter, the scientific ones. And that's why it's so important for believers to explain to them that there's a whole hell of a lot more to this thing than, you know, that. That's just very superficial. This idea that you just get to live and die and skate and, you know, nothing else matters. I don't think about where I'm going from here. I don't think about souls and integrity and honor and, you know, uh, the fact that not caring about the least of men means not caring about Jesus, even though, yeah, I go to Christmas parties and I talk about it because so many other people do. And, you know, it just, the people are missing the mark and I don't want their blood on my hands or head. When at the harvest time, if they don't know it, but they're really a weed, they look very close. It's like fool's gold or something, right? There are weeds that can mimic a cultivar. And so it's very difficult to identify it until the very end. And that's what I mean. I don't want them to say, look, nobody warned me, God. And, you know, yeah, that guy claimed to be religious and he was bragging and talking about Jesus and the Bible and all this crap and acting all altruistic and, you know, goody two-shoes and preachy and all this. But he never warned me that this was serious business, that this was a ticket to hell, okay, a surefire ticket to hell, that I was just off track in my mind, was impure. Okay, I was carnal, worldly minded, and I didn't know that I was on the highway to hell, but I'm so glad he warned me so I could turn and be on the side of humanity and not selective humanity, not picking and choosing my peers and the people I associate with and my cliques and circles, okay, which is what people do, right? I mean, this class and all this, and you know, you're out of your league, boy. You're, you know, a commoner. I'm uh, somebody. I'm here at the Oscars. And I'm in the political arena or I'm in the, you know, this or that, you know, the guild or you see what I mean? I mean, everybody thinks there's somebody. It's that elitist spirit. It's an evil spirit and it's a surefire ticket to hell. OK, you've got to have the opposite, whatever the opposite of being elitist is. And as far as I know, it's being egalitarian. That's it. A very good American quality, you know, and sometimes you get a little cocky you know, outspoken. I think that's what a good American does. But, you know, later you can apologize, say, look, I, I said that in the wrong tone of voice. I meant it like this. And, you know, so it's okay, you know, because we do, we're all at battle. So we all want to tend to just lash out and just, you know, rebuke and, you know, give a rebuttal, a stern scolding to somebody that we know is wrong. And, but what do we do? We lose the opportunity to win a friend for God. So this has to do with where your eternal spirit goes. Did you offer that person a drink of cold water? Did you encourage them and comfort them and point them in the right direction and talk about how serious this thing is? And, you know, what did you do? So we're all going to be answerable, and we should all be happy about that. A lot of people say, well, why in the hell would I want to be accountable? Well, because this is your opportunity to be rewarded for doing the right thing in life and passing the test. Not the test of, you know, you got this issue or that issue. I mean, we all have issues, okay? We all have issues. I'm not talking about that. That's our sinful state, struggles and battles. And, you know, we know that we're not right in this and that. But those aren't the things that are going to get us to hell, okay? Because the thing that will get us to hell is valuing the wrong thing, okay? And if you value the things of this world more than the things of God, the holy, eternal things, okay, that are consistent with what God says we ought to value, then we're going to hell. It's that simple. So it's not a mystery how people end up in hell and miss the mark. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. God doesn't want it to be. He wants us to have clean hands. He wants us to have pure hearts. He wants us to see good. And he wants us to share that with others because that's the way that we affect change. That's how we win friends for him. That's it, and that's how we make a better world. That's fighting the good fight. That's seeking happiness and really finding it in a tangible way when somebody, you know, even though you might ever not know the changes you've affected in life till, you know, in the next realm or something, you might discover how effective you were and get your blessings then. But in the meantime, you can be sure at least, you know, you've done your job. You've done your best to affect change, to be God's friend, and to really work for a better world, not for some, but for everybody. To be pure of heart means to believe in things like equality, to be a good American and egalitarian. You've got to care. You've got to be passionate whenever somebody smacks of being an elitist. 
in any way. And you've got to let it offend you. And you've got to say, look, I'm going to tell you straight, you know, that's serious stuff. That's what will get you to hell. Okay. And you've got to take it seriously. I mean, really, and I just, I've got to warn you because I don't want your blood on my hands or on my head. So this is serious, serious stuff. And it's not about exalting yourself. I'm right. You're wrong. And you know, you're, I'm smart. You're stupid. And you see what I mean? I mean, that is going to get you to hell too. You're going to hell with that same person that you're condemning. For with the measure we judge others, we too shall be judged. So we've got to be for real, man. I mean, and take it very serious. Who we are at the end of the day, when we stand one-on-one -on -one with our owner, with our creator, with God Almighty. And we've got to help other people really try to convey the necessity for that reverence, that fear of God in our souls which is the beginning of wisdom. Understand, you should fear God. You should want that, welcome that fear of God, that compunction, that contrition, that shame that goes with being, you know, falling short. And um, at least admit it and get it off your chest. And sometimes his ears are the only ones that are strong enough to hear what needs to be said. That's why you go in your closet and pray. Nobody else deserves to have to hear the things that we, ha we think over with God or we talk over with God. And he's the only one that can know, love, and understand us the way we need to be known, loved, and understood. That's why it's so important to take it to him and for that empowerment. Say, look, I want to do the right thing here and I want to live forever. You know, I don't like this thing called death. And you shouldn't. I, you know, I think Billy Graham is wrong to boast and say, I'm looking forward to dying and all that. Hey, look, whatever. Maybe it is wonderful. Maybe it's like when you were, you know, a teenager or something and you always wondered, you know, what this thing they talk about, this orgasmic thing, you know, you know, you're completely ignorant, oblivious to it because you're a virgin still. And, but, you know, you say, well, it must feel really good or else people wouldn't be so hung up on it because you can see everybody's like, you know, you see your parents or whatever, you know it's a big deal. You know it just, it just is. There's this very powerful force between the male and female of the species that uh, we know from a very young age. But it's similar to that, and maybe it will be wonderful to be dead, but I sure as hell don't look forward to it. I don't, I, in fact, I, I, I hope that I'm living in that generation that never tastes the first death. But come say, come saw, I got to leave it in God's hands. If he says, no, I'm sorry, but you're going to die and rest with your forefathers until the resurrection of the dead, and then you'll be judged, and, uh, and you'll get what you deserve at that point. Uh, let God's will be done. I mean, and we, you know, this is the basis for our faith. We need it. What are the alternatives? Not having faith? It's like God says, here, I'm giving you this free insurance. I'm not a liar. The things I'm telling you are true. And you can count on them. I'm honest and trustworthy and true. And I can't lie. It would go against my very nature. And this free insurance policy I'm offering all of you. And, you know, why wouldn't you take it? So logically, you take it. It's a faith that we just say, okay, that's it, man. What, what are my options? I've got to trust something. you got to have faith in something. you got to believe somebody. Faith in something bigger. Even the who talks about it, right? But um, we're one family, and we've got to act like that and stop belittling and marginalizing and subjugating people for one stupid elitist excuse after another that we, we've been trained to be divided against each other. The devil is in the details of this thing, so it's serious. It's very serious. For all those that know right from wrong, you have a grave duty I, you know, an insurpassably imperative, crucial duty to convey to others this most important information because it's about salvation. Where we go from here, that's it. And that's going to be decided by the one that created us, that owns us.